Perfect. Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the freeform select tool. So let's open up my web browser and we'll go to, let's go to Pixabay today. And we'll look for, let's look for a lion today. So we'll look for a lion picture. This one's pretty good. I think uh, there's loads here, right? So you can pick any ones you want. Uh, I think we use this one. So we'll click free download click on the download button and then I've got this folder on my computer I'll drag and drop this picture in here I'll keep a copy of this link and I'll add that to the YouTube description so you can download this same image we'll open up GIMP software and we will drag and drop the picture of this line we'll go to file save as and let's save it as lion we just keep a save copy of our GIMP file here. What I want to do is get rid of this, uh, these highlights here in the background. So we use the paintbrush tool and we'll click black here. So we'll select our mouse in here and we drag to the bottom left and we'll click OK and that will give us a black swatch here. We've got the paintbrush tool. I'll select this tool here or this paintbrush here. And I just want to paint over this highlight here and a little bit down here. I just really want the background to be black and we'll do the same here might be a little bit hard to see on the screen but there's some little highlights in the background just want to get rid of them and just keep it all black here so that should be good um, let's click on the move tool and then we'll right click on this add an alpha channel we'll right click and go to duplicate and when you duplicate it five times so we've got five copies of the line here we'll hide the bottom four and we'll keep the top one selected you know it's selected because it's got a white box around it and then we want to click on the free select tool so we select this tool and it's also called the lasso tool in some other uh, software so that it's got like a little lasso thing here but in GIMP it's called the free select tool so we select that and we're going to hold down the control key and zoom in on this eye and we use the mouse wheel to zoom in so let's just use the mouse wheel to zoom in on that eye and we'll left click and just keep left clicking around the eye and we'll select the eye like this and when we get to the end we want to join the dots together and that will make the selection and we'll hit the enter key now really what we want to do is make two selections because we selected the eye here but we also want to select the other eye on the right hand side so we'll hold down the middle mouse button on our mouse wheel so we'll hold down that mouse wheel and we'll drag across like this and we'll get to this eye but when we select this eye we want to hold down the shift key on our keyboard so keep holding down the shift key and do this selection as well but using the shift key and make sure it's always held down while you do the selection on this side just keep holding down that shift key while you select this eye and we'll join it here and once that's all selected keep holding down the shift key and hit the enter key and if you hold down the control key and use your mouse wheel you'll see that both eyes are selected now right so only holding down the shift key will make sure that both eyes are selected and we want to press control c on our keyboard or edit copy so we'll copy the eyes and we'll create a new layer and we'll make that a transparent layer and we'll click OK and then we'll press Control V or Edit Paste and then we just want to click on this top layer and use the anchor here and click the anchor, float it down and anchor it down and if we hide the lion now we'll see that we just got the eyes selected like this and with, the, with this top layer selected we want to duplicate that five times so we'll do a duplicate layer, one, two, three, four, and five. So we've got five copies, one, two, three, four, five, we've got actually six. So we can right click and uh, delete that layer. So we've got five of the eyes and five of the line. We want to hide these eyes. 
So we've got the top layer selected for the eyes and the top layer of the line selected here, of these ones here, right? So let's click on the line one. We'll use our mouse wheel and the control key to zoom back out. Let's get this in the middle here. And now we can play around with this image. We can manipulate the eyes and the lines separately. That's what we want to do. So we'll go to color and we'll go to hue and saturation and we can change the color of the line. Let's make the line purple just for fun. We'll click OK. And then we'll click on the eyes at the top here and we'll go to color and we'll go to hue and saturation. And this time we will change it to, uh, we'll make the eyes, let's make the eyes, I don't know, what color? Can we make them blue? Let's make them blue. Let's make it a bit of contrast there. We can lighten them up a bit and increase the saturation to something like this. And we'll click OK. We'll go to File, Export As. And we'll call it Lion. Let's, let's save it as a JPEG file. JPEG. We'll call it Lion01. Export. And that will be our first line. We can hide the eyes and we can hide the line. We'll click on this layer for the eyes and we'll click on this layer for the line. So now we can do a different uh, effect, let's say. Let's click on the line one more time. This time we'll go to color and we'll go to hue and saturation again. And this time we'll set the saturation all the way down to zero and that will give us this gray line. And then we'll click on the eyes and this time we will go to color, hue and saturation, and we'll set the eyes to something like a, set them to like a purple color. And we'll click OK. So that's another style. We'll go to File, Export, As, and we've got JPEG Line version 2. And we'll click Export, and we'll export this one. And then we can hide those ones and we can pick the ones below, so the third layer down, and then this line layer down here. And let's try something else. Let's go to filter, let's go to, uh, let's go to artistic, and let's do, let's do oilify. And we're gonna change it to almost like a, like an oil painting. So let's do something like, something like this, we'll click OK, we'll click on the eyes, we'll go back to filter and we'll go to artistic, oilify, we'll click OK and then we can even change the colour of the eyes as well so we can go back to colour, hue and saturation and we can change those eye colours to whatever we want. Let's make them, uh, let's make it like a, blue color like that. We'll click OK. So that's a different style now. We'll go to File, Export As, and we'll make it version three. And we'll hide that one. We'll click on version four and this line here. Let's try one more, filter. Let's go to, artistic and this time let's try I wonder what glass tiles do let's try that so I'm not really liking that so we'll click cancel go to tools let's go to filters and let's try out cartoon You can click on split here so you can see the original half and what the effect will look like afterwards or you can untick that and you can see the whole line i quite like that that's quite interesting actually so we'll click ok and then we'll go to color we can even change the color of that if we want you can mess around with it you can go to things like levels you can play around with the levels and create different effects here you can darken it down and just get the line showing just the face like that. You can really play around with the images. 
And the reason why we created so many copies is that we can just play around with each image. So we can have it like something like something like this. We could lighten it up a bit. And we could cl click OK. With that bottom layer selected, we could then go to our paintbrush tool. If black is already selected, we'll increase the size a little bit. We can get rid of the background here. Just get rid of some of these hairs that we don't want. Something like that. And then we can click on the eyes. We can do something with those. So let's go back to filter. And we'll go to artistic. And let's look at soft glow, right? What you can do is click preview and you can turn it off and on and see what it looks like. So I don't think that really looks good. So maybe with the eyes, we'll go to let's try yeah, let's just change the color. So let's go to, let's try color temperature. So here we can make the eyes really orange. You can see like the difference. That's what it originally looked like and that's what it looks like now. So that's kind of a nice effect. We can click OK on that, accept that. And then you can even go back to hue and saturation. You could change the colors now, right? Something different. You can get it more red, more orange, whatever you want to do, play around with it. Click OK. That's another example. Let's go to file, export as, and we'll make that version four. So we've got four different versions. And normally what I do is if I want to do another example, I will always retain these layers. If I hide these two layers and enable uh, this bottom one and enable this layer here, normally what I would label these as is original eyes. So this will always be my original layer, the one that I'll always keep. And then this one here will be always the original lion. So these two I never manipulate. I'll always keep them as original copies of the original raw content. And if I want to make another version, I'll just right click and duplicate that layer and then hide this layer. Then right click on this one and duplicate it and hide it. And always try and keep my original copies. That way if I want to manipulate something or change it, let's just go to file save. I've always got these two to reference back to the original copies. So now we've got these new copies, we can just enable them. So we've got this one open and this one open these layers. We can click on the line here and we can go and do something else to it. So, there's so much to play around with here. Um, and this is a nice way to experiment with the tools and try and find out what they're doing and experiment with them. Uh, it's a good way to learn from it as well, especially with all of these filters and stuff. Um, so many to go through, right? So you've got to play around with it and see what looks good and then you can learn from them as well so we might do one more example listen well we've got it open now we may as well <coughs> so let's check out cubism here you can play around with the seed and that just the random seed just gives it a random effect. So I think that might be okay. We'll click okay. We'll go to the eyes. That's the eyes here. We'll go to filter and we'll go back to artistic cubism. You might want to reduce that to something like this. <clears throat> so we can still tell the eyes. We'll click okay. And that could be another example. You clean up this background, or you can leave it with the, these little speckles and 
stuff in there you can leave that there if you want and we'll save that as our last version export as version 5 export go to file save so the main let's just go back to our original layers so the main objective of this, this tutorial was to demonstrate how to use this freeform select tool that was the main point of the tutorial but also we showed you how you can the reason why we're using that tool because we wanted to select the eyes only and have the line as a separate image and manipulate the eyes and the line separately so we used the freeform select tool or what, what it, the free select tool to select the eyes only and we used the shift key so we've selected the first eye and then we hold down the shift key and selected the second eye and it was able to make two separate selections and that allowed us to select the eyes and then have the picture of the line in the background and because those eyes sit on a top layer we can manipulate them separately away from the line let's go to file save we'll close this we'll click on line 01 so that was the first example we've got this crazy purple line with the blue eyes we've got this grayscale version we've got the oily fire got this one I think this one actually came out really well <clears throat> and then we've got this this one wasn't so great but it's like this uh, I don't know what it, it's like this mirror thing I think this one looks the best out of a lot of them right looks pretty cool okay so you can go away and experiment and play around with the different tools in GIMP and you can use a completely different image if you've got a picture of a person you can select the eyes of the person instead and you can go away and experiment and have a little play with this tool Okay, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.